welcome to another surprise video. I am so sorry for because well, this was supposed to be a supposed to be last Wednesday, the October. It's supposed to be October. I think we're on the twenty third. Okay, this is supposed to be on what is this? That we're on the twentieth, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen. It's supposed to be on the 16th of June, no, September. That was, that was supposed to be on the 16th of September. But unfortunately, I missed it in about a week and I did not realize it. I should just make a reminder of what the day it's going to be. But anyways, I want to start reading this next thing that we have on the list. Now, the next thing on the list is, you, you see in here for Deku, a fan fiction. For my hair academia. So I'm gonna read three certain types of three fan fictions right now. Today. So today I'm reading three fan fictions. Um they're all they're all my hair academia stuff. So let's get started with this first fanfic. It's called The Greatest My Hair Academia Fanfiction of All Time. The greatest? We'll see. We'll find out. Find out why it's the greatest. Alright, this is by Bubalubagus. Bubalubagus. Alright. Oh, and most, most of these fanfictions are on fanfiction.net. So I'm just going to read it through and get back to some classic My Academia. So I need to make sure I measure in the same spot. Let's hope it doesn't fall over. There we go. Alright, you ready? Let's get started. Excuse me, Midoriya, but could you come see me in my office? Ask on mine. Oh, yes, eagerly responded Izuku, but he was anxious. What if it was something horrible? Facing horrible things is all part of being a hero, thought oh, Izuku to himself. I can't afford to be afraid if I'm going to surpass All Might. Izuku baby slid up and walked over to All Might's office. He ignored all worries or concerns he had and smiled. Just like his out, though. What do you want to talk about, All Might? Asked Izuku. Please, have a seat, young Midoriya, said All Might in a somber tone. Izuku entered this room, having finally freed himself from his fear. But after hearing All Might's tone, he could feel his nerves turning. What is it? asked Izuku anxiously. There have been rumors of a huge film attack overseas, said All Might. Izuku was even more afraid now than he was before. He felt that he shouldn't be concerned so much about another country's affairs. But all my expression was so serious that he could feel the dread emanating from the number one hero. And he could feel it like seeping into him. What's the, what does this mean? Asked Midoriya. Secretly know what to think. He couldn't even wrap his head around what was happening. We have to do something! Yelled Midoriya. Even if I'm scared, I just can't let other people die. After all, and after all that, All Might has done for me, I have to help him. Father Zuko, you are right, young Midoriya. And I'm so grateful that you want to help me, said All Might. His voice was a mixture of fear and pride. I'm confident in my choosing you as my successor. We are leaving for America immediately. Immediately? I thought, thought Izuku in shock. This is insane. What? Now? Asked Midoriya, becoming unsure of himself once again. Yes, said All Might, dead serious. This is of the utmost urgency. We cannot waste a second. Jesus, how serious is this? Thought Midoriya. Come on, Midoriya. We must go, demanded All Might. Y yes, sir. And he followed All Might out of the school. Oh, there's something... Serious, something seriously in trouble with what's happening in the world and Izuku and Izuku and Midoriya no and All Might Izuku and, and All Might were discussing about what's happening in the world because the villains are taking all over the place alright let's just keep continue hey I Hey, Aida, have you seen Deku? said Uraka. 
Oh, actually, I haven't seen him in a while. He went to talk with All Might a few hours ago and hasn't returned, responded Ida. Talk with All Might? Although it wasn't anything serious, said Uraka. I don't know. Things have been odd lately, answered Ida. Yeah, agreed Uraka. I'm always being interrupted by planes flying overhead, but there isn't an airport near my house. This has never happened to me before, said Uraka with growing concern. Yeah, I happen to notice the same thing, said Ida. I discovered something terrifying, Uraka gulped, her fears starting to overcome her. You're correct. There aren't any airports even close to her, said Ida. At least not for civilians. That's right, thought Uraka. That could only mean one thing. I'm sure that you already know this, but Musutafu City has the largest military base in all of Japan, said Ida. Which can only mean that the military is mobilizing, said Uraka, finishing Ida's thought. She wishes that Deku was here. He would know what to do. No. If I want to be here, then I have to take matters to my own hands, thought Uraka, with a newfound determination. I can't afford to keep relying on him. Just then, an alarm sounded. Uraka and I did froze with fear. Is that... started Uraka. The emergency evacuation alarm? Finished Ida. Their minds were controlled by fear, and they just ran for the shelter as fast as they could. All thoughts of heroism or action were abandoned so quickly that they forgot they even had them in the first place. Okay, this is uh, some sort of an action. If you think of an action movie, there's lots to it, okay? There's lots. So, Simidori, we're finally here in America. All Might turned towards Midoriya with a pain expression. Yes, we are, he said in a grave tone. Well, well, what do we do now? asked Midoriya. But All Might was silent. Uh, All Might? Midoriya was starting to get really scared. So scared that he didn't know if he could even act. Young Midoriya. All Might finally spoke. Deku didn't say anything, but faced All Might and gave him attention. I have no strength left, as you know. I have become completely useless as a hero, said All Might. Don't say that. I have so much to learn from you, said Midoriya, not wanting to accept the reality that All Might was no longer able to be a hero. Yes, but that is as your teacher. As a hero, there is nothing more that I can do. I am now your mentor, nothing else, said All Might. He paused in case Midoriya had any more comments, but he seemed to accept this. And as your mentor, he continued, I must focus on what I can do to help you. Because only you have the power to stop what has been set in motion. Midori was confused. You mean the villains, right? Midori watched as the pain expression returned to Alma's face. No, he said. This only further contributed to Midori's confusion. What? He asked. Unable to find the words he wanted to say. There's no attack in America. Answered Alma. What? Yelled Deku. Is this all some sort of joke? I can't believe that you would bring me here for no reason. There is a reason that we are here, young Victoria. And it is much more terrifying than the villain attack. I just told you that because if you knew the truth, you never would have come. Dora felt like his soul had left his body and it was replaced with a hunk of lead. What? Midori asked, but softer this time. It was more of a mumble. His skin felt icy and his bones felt like they were covered in molasses. No way. There's just no way, he said with hysterical fear. Young Midoriya, this is the fate that you chose when you accepted one for all, said All Might. The world's fate rests in your hands. Wait, I don't even know what's happening. What could be worse than the full-scale attack from the villains? Asked Midoriya, having somewhat recovered from his breakdown. Something that has happened in a while, though everybody knows about it if they pay any amount of attention in history class, said Almond. Stop being vague and just tell me already. You said this was serious, didn't you? Said Deku, growing irritated. 
In short, the world has returned to war, and this time it could be the end of everything, said Omit. What? War? asked Midoriya. How do you even know that? And if there's a war, why are we back in Japan defending it? There's a reason for everything, young Midoriya. Japan won't exist for much longer, said All Might. Midoriya was sent. America launched several nuclear warheads intended to completely obliterate Japan. We are safest here. I don't want to be safe. I want to save my friends, yelled Midoriya. Tears fell in his eyes. I am sorry, Midoriya. But there's no saving them from their fate. I was lucky enough to get some forewarning from the ties I still have here. Said All Might. What do we do? I'm so confused, said Midoriya. We will survive here. It would be difficult. The hardest thing either of us have done, said All Might. It will be hell, but the world can't afford to lose you, Midoriya. I don't understand, said Midoriya. What's going to happen to us? Just then the police came and placed Midoriya in handcuffs. All Might, what is happening? Asked Midoriya. You're being arrested. Is I read this or you will die in Japan? I'm sorry. I didn't have a choice. Answered All Might. You're just going to let me go to jail? Screamed Midoriya. You aren't going to jail, Midoriya. You're going somewhere much worse. Said All Might. Where? Asked Midoriya in fear. Desperately believing that this would not be his fate. Where are they taking me? All Might turned to his student for the final time. Tears of regret in his eyes. You're going to where the rest of the Japanese are. The internment camps. He said solemnly. Midori went limped in the officer's arms. The internment camps? The same ones from World War II? Those slums? That's where I'm going? Midori thought. This is hopeless. There's no way for me to escape. Midori resigned himself to the custody of the police. And was taken away. Oh my God! This is this is ah oh God! This is fan fiction number one, and I chose this. This is so damn good. This is so so damn good. Why? Because I don't have to know. I don't know. I'll get this. Oh yeah, I didn't realize this is the tragedy dispense. This is, wow, I cannot believe this is going to happen like this. But they put themselves in a different kind of a seriousness. This is very seriousness. Uh, okay, let's move on. Let's go to another one. Okay, next one I'm going to read. It's called My Hair Academia Winds of Change. All right, I'm going to put this somewhere right here. So I'm going to, I don't want to. No, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to another room and take this somewhere else, okay? Hi. Okay, so the next fiction is called My Hair Academia, Wait to Change. This is by Crow Hater 3690. Alright, this is a a RP, a role play. So let's uh let's get started here and I have this Plants here. Well, it's about to die soon. But who cares? Okay, let's read this. This is between Bakugo and Kachan. Not Bakugo Kachan. They're the same. Bakugo and Midoriya. Alright, let's read this. Izuku was at UA class, had just let out, and he was packing up his notebook and pencils, getting ready to head back to his dorm room. The other students had already left the classroom. So it seemed like Izuku would be the last one out. Bakugo noticed how Izuku had left the classroom, yet he decided to go back in while no one else was around. He grabbed a bottle of water and stuck it in his bag, then walked into the classroom and approached Izuku. Hey Deku, Bakugo said roughly. Hey Kachan, Izuku said, pulling his sleeves down to hide his arms. How was your day? Bakugo asked. Good, how about you? Izuku asked nervously. Busy. Bakugo roughly answers. Well? 
Azuka said before he finished packing his own bag. Bakugo realized Izuku was done packing up and ready to go. It was his chance now. He pulled out the bottle of water and hands it to Izuku. Drink this, he commands. Why? Azuka asked. Just do it, but follow me. Baku said coldly. Okay, Azuka said before drinking the water and following Baku bringing his bag with him. Baku walked to his dorm room and opened the door. Izuku is confused, but still follows. Baku shuts the door behind him. Kanchan, what's going on? Izuku asks as he sets down his bag and now the empty bottle. You'll see. Baku replies as he locks the door. Izuku gets a little nervous. Baku pulls Izuku close and kisses him roughly. Oh, it's about to be down here. Well, it's about to be down. Izuku blushes darkly in surprise. Baku pins Izuku to the bed, still kissing him. Oh, please. Izuku melts into it and starts kissing back. Baku rips off Izuku's shirt and continues kissing him. Izuku's very red in the face but keeps kissing back. Baku pulls back to breathe, then rips off Izuku's pants. Gachan! Azuka started. What, Deku? Bakugo asked, annoyed at the interruption. You're, you're still fully clothed? Azuku said. Bakugo chuckles. Yeah, so what? He replied. Azuku blushes darkly. Bakugo chuckles again. You're so adorable when you blush like that. He said, almost yelling. Stop! Azuka said, blushing even more clear from embarrassment. Stop what? Baku asks, then kisses Azuka. Azuka kisses back, however, he didn't understand any of this. Azuka kisses back, however, he didn't understand any of this. Baku reaches down and palms Azuka roughly. Azuka gasps in surprise and moans. Baku laughs and caressingly continues palming Azuka. You like that, don't you? He asks, teasingly. Azuka nods, moaning again. Baku continues palming Izuku, then stops and takes out his own hands. Izuku whines a bit at the loss of contact, uncomfortably, hard. He still doesn't understand this. He knew what Baku was doing. What he doesn't know is why. Baku sits on Izuku's hard <laughs> with his bare hands, <gasps> letting it penetrate him. Izuku moans loudly. Kachan! He screams with a stutter. Baku comes up a bit, then slams back down on Azuku's <laughs> riding him roughly. Azuku moans loudly again. Baku go, goes fast and tries to make Azuku. <laughs> Azuku moans and <laughs> after 15 minutes. Baku laughs and gets off Azuku and lays beside him, panting. Azuku pants heavily, exhausted because that was his first time having sex. Baku puts my arm over Izuku. Sorry if I hurt you, Deku. He apologized. It, it's fine. I'm just really tired. Azuku replied exhaustedly. Yeah, I'm tired too. But that was great, Baku said. Azuku gave me a smoke song. Yeah, yeah. What did you make me drink? He asked. Uh... Baku says, unsure of how to explain it. Kachan? Azuku asked. It was just water, Deku. Baku blurred down. Oh, okay. But why did you make me drink it? Azuku replied, still confused. Uh, no reason. Baku replied, oh. Kachan, I know there's something. Baku said, catching on to Baku's odd behavior. I can't say because you'll hate me, Bakugo said. What was it? Azuko asked, getting worried. Bakugo decides to admit the truth. Okay, so, I lied before. It wasn't just water. I had spiked the water with something before giving it to you, he confused. With what? Azuko asked. Bakugo cited. Okay. It was a drug, yes. You drugged me? Azuku asked, shouting in shock. Baku looked down, keeps quiet. The drug? What was it? Azuku cried. Nothing harmful. Don't worry about it. 
back to Richard. Okay, Azuka laughed. I'm sorry, Bakuto said. He can't even look at Azuka, ashamed of himself. Azuka's eyes forced himself to get calm. It's all right, he said. You sure? You're not mad? Bakuto asked. No, I'm not mad, Azuka replied. Bakuto pulls Izuku and cuddles him. Kachan, we're still not worried anything, Azuka said. I know, I don't care, Bakuto snapped. But I I do, Azuka said, blushing. Bakuto says, okay, okay, all right, he said, and starts getting dressed. Azuka starts getting dressed as well. Bakuto got dressed, then sits on his bed. Azuka got dressed, then sat next to him. Bakuto grabbed Azuka and pulled him into his lap and holds him. Azuka leans into Bakuto. Kasha? He asked. Azuka? Bakuto asked. Why were you so mean for me all, all those years? Azuka asked sadly. Bakuto gave a long answer. Because when I was younger, I was a self-centered brat even now, I can still be a jerk, and I know that. But back in the last few years of middle school, I started to like you, and after everything I was scared, you didn't feel the same. So I continued to be jerk to hide my feelings and to scare you, if and off the chance you did like me. It was a dumb decision to make. I know, and I'm sorry. He answers, tearing up. Asuka hugs Bakugo. I forgive you. He said sincerely. Bakugo hugs back. Izuku gave a small smile. Bakugo kisses Azuka's neck. Azuka blushes. Bakugo holds Azuku and Azuku leans to Bakugo. Bakugo kisses Azuka's neck and then kisses his shoulder. Azuku closes his eyes intently. Bakugo gently squeezes Azuka and kisses his neck again and sucks leaving the heck you. Azuka opens up his eyes, shocked. Did you? He starts. Did I what? Bakugo asks. Azuka feels the neck where Bakugo left the hickey. Bakugo hugs Azuka. Azuka hugs back. Deku, you're mine now. You belong to me. And me only. Bakugo said abruptly. Okay, Kachan. Azuka replied. I love you, Deku. Bakugo said with a smile before pinning Azuka again and kissing him. What a day! Oh my god. Okay. Let's just let's just move forward here because this is This last one is from Awareness Bringer. It's called Manage a Team of Heroes. So this is the day Azuka attends UA's Department of Management. Okay, it's a little good ones. Alright, here we go. Down to the last one. Having gone into UA High School's Department of Management due to his analysis of certain quirks, regardless of not having one himself, Azuku Midoriya was determined to one day manage a hero office that would live up to All Might's example. As part of his management exclusive studies, Izuku was tasked to put together five students from the Department of Heroes and see how they would cooperate as a team. Selecting his choice from Class 1A, Izuku soon meet up with them in a room used by the management classes from the hands-on lessons in venture capitalism and while he was internally shy with how they would respond to him. He wanted to make a good first impression for the conceptual team he would be working with for the school year. Taking a scene in front of the five heroes in training, who were all seated, Izuku scanned them from left to right as he thought what to say. On the Far left was San Koji Koda with Miro Mineta coming close, who Izuku could tell was enjoying being close to the sole girl in the middle of the group. The invisible Toro Hokage, followed by Hansero, who also liked being next to Toro, and finally the ever eager Ijiro Kiyoshima. Clearing his throat, Izuku then said, <clears throat> Okay, guys and a girl. Embarrassed that his amendment elicited a small smile on Koji, while the other four could help but laugh. Azuka tried to shake it off as he went on. I'm Izuku Mentoria from the Department of Management. As part of my studies, I'm supposed to practice handling a hero team, and that's where you five come in. 
scratching the back of his head. Sheepishly, Izuku concluded with, I hope we can get along all right for this assignment. Ichiro shrugged as he grinned, saying, It's no trouble, Midoriya. If anything, you're being manly just put by us together. Izuku tried to think of a way to respond to Ichiro's radical for a compliment. The latter then tilted his head as he asked, but I didn't see my buddy Bako call you Deku or something the other day. How does that, that, how does that fit in the name you just gave us? Hearing the sure name of his one-time friend, Katsuki Bako, Zuku could not help but grow pensive from Idris' question that both the latter and the other studies noticed. Forced himself to answer, Zuku replied, Well, Kancha and I kind of drifted apart as we grew older. From when we were little kids dreaming about becoming heroes. Since he's in your class, I can imagine you've seen his personality. You mean the occasional death threats and swearing, among other things? Minero asked with an instinctive hand raised up. Toru tried to stifle a giggle. Still, Kachan? Whoever knew a guy like that would have such a nickname? Hanta then got Izuku's attention, saying, What about you? If you want to be a hero like we all do, then why are you in the management department? Planning something for the next sports festival or something? Physically uncomfortable, Izuku ultimately answered with that downcast expansion. I'm quirkless. Getting their shocked attention, he then added, That's why Kachin calls me Deku. As far as he's concerned, I'm just a worthless and defenseless Izuku. Looking back at five uncertainly, he asked, does that make me look less appealing of a manager to you all? The class one Asians were initially confused by Zuko's question before they, they, before they then all responded in negative, much to his surprise. No way, man. Is your cry as in I definitely work hard to get into the school. If Vanko doesn't understand that, then maybe neither of us should be buddies with him. Yeah, and uh, Gritty. I know that Japan works differently than most countries, but there has to be a limit to how badly someone can make another person feel. Trust me, I may have been born with a cork, but I feel what you went through even now. Minoru said to Izuku, considering his own insecurity. If it makes you feel terrible still, just let us know. Tora offered an determination. Um, I still want to work with you, if that's okay, the quiet Koji admitted. Touched by his new team's quick defense of him, Aizuka showed a small smile as he then said. Thanks, everyone. Still, you shouldn't let my past with Kachan cloud your judgment of him. Lucky or not, he's still in your class, and I actually do hope he'll mature over time. He then showed a resolute look as he added. More importantly, the six of us need to work together. I've read about your quirks and how they can be applied for direct fighting in Kirishima's case, long range in action in Minetas, uh, villain captures in Seros, stealth in Hakagures, and gentle support in Kobis. So I see something good in all of you put together. Gesture in his arms, he then said. Let's get started, people. Right. Everyone cheered and responded. There we go. That's a good ending. This is just a little discussion and why he picked some sort of this is why he picked some discussion in sort of teams. I mean that's a that's pretty that's a sounds a good way to read all that stuff up and make sure we got everything under control, make sure we're in the right spot and hey, who knows? We just got along in it, we just got along through it and we're in good hands. We're definitely in good hands. Sure, the word the gear and becoming the manager or something. It's just these things, okay? Just some sort of stuff. Okay, guys, that is the end of this surprise video. I just wanted to make sure I got everything under control and then all this very quickly and done. Make sure everything of all the stuff out here will be done for the whole day, okay? And that'll be all. Okay, guys, bye, everyone.